Hi, this video is on another Atari 5200 controller project. If you watched my uh, previous video, uh, you might have seen that I built this homemade controller. Um, this homemade controller had a thumbstick built into it, a couple fire buttons, um, keypad, uh, digital potentiometer, and a microcontroller to translate uh, between the thumbstick and the uh, resistance range that the Atari 5200 was expecting. Um, it's worked out pretty good. Um, I've been using it for a while, but I wanted to try and see if I could use a good old PlayStation 2 controller. And what would it take to interface that to the uh, Atari 5200? So I have come up with a circuit. Um, I'll go into detail on this later. Um, right now I'm just going to do the demo part. Um, you can see there's a board here. This silver connector is going off to the uh, Atari 5200 standard 15 pin connector. And then over here we have um, a connector for a PS2 joystick. I just cut this off of a PS2 uh, extension cord. And as usual, we've got keypad here. Um, you can push, it's actually upside down. Keypad, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And the other two buttons start, uh, reset, pause. Um, so you've got your full keypad capabilities built into this adapter unit. And then over here, I'm going to plug in our PS2 joystick. Uh, so it starts out in ambidextrous mode, so whichever thumbstick I use will be the one that it uh, registers as the primary joystick. So here you can see I'm running the horizontal on the left thumbstick. Here I'm running the horizontal on the right thumbstick. Um, the vertical does change a little bit just because, you know, as I'm pushing this, it vertical's bouncing around a little bit. Fire buttons, um, either fire button will work, so... That's fire button one, that's fire button two. Um, they actually do stuff in pizza. Test cartridge. So let's let's try out a game with this. Let's turn up the volume a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna use the start button down here. I'll push start. And we're playing Galaxian. I can you have to run it a couple times and it'll get used to the uh, joystick positioning. So here you can see I'm using the right hand stick. It's working great. Um, I can also use the left hand stick. Also working just fine. Galaxian's nice because it is uh, analog and it has two speeds. So you can see we've got both the slow speed and the fast speed and in the other direction you've got slow and fast. It stops on a dime, which is good. Uh, let's try out uh, Missile Command. And again, I'll push the Start button uh, down here. So there's our crosshair with Missile Command. Um, play it right-handed. Missile Command's actually a little bit difficult to play with um, self-centering joystick, in my opinion, because it's always trying to pull you back to the center. So, I'm mean, certain I can play it with left-handed if I wanted to. Um, for the hell of it, we'll try a, a fully digital game. Let's do uh, Pac-Man. Here's Pac-Man. Push the start button. Pac-Man go left, right, up, down. Switch sticks. Pac-Man's working as we expect him to. Okay. Uh, so that was ambidextrous mode. Now, um, let me load up Robotron. And we're going to take and we'll plug... Here, I'll, I'm going to plug the second um, joystick port in. So now I've got primary joystick plugged in. Um, and I've got secondary joystick plugged in. Um, so if we start this up... Um, by default, it's still going to start in ambidextrous mode. 
Um, so that's actually firing in the same direction that I'm moving because it's um, it's sending the same thing to uh, both joystick ports. But we can put this in left joystick mode. So now the left stick is my movement stick, the right stick is my fire stick. And I did that by pushing select and square. Now if I, uh, let's start again, I put uh, select and circle, put it in right joystick mode. Now the right joystick is my movement and the left stick is my fire. And then pushing um, select and up, we'll put it back into uh, ambidextrous mode. So here again, one stick is controlling them both. Of course, if you want to play Robotron, you probably want to put it in either the left or the right mode, so you actually do have independent control of your firing and your movement. Uh, so that's a basic demo. So just a note on cabling. Um, so I have these extension cables. This end plugs into the 5200. This end here, of course, plugs into the adapter. Um, these originally came with these plastic ends on them. I took and I cut the plastic end off. Um, and then I put this uh, better quality plug on because this uh, plastic one plugs in there, kind of works, but it also falls off real easy. Um, these quality ones are kind of a bit of extra work to um, crimp those on, but they will actually stay plugged in, which is nice, and they even have the little screws if I'm tighten them up. Okay, let's take a look at the schematic. If you followed my um, handheld homemade controller, this will all be very similar because a lot of the elements came from that project. Um, so over here, Part's easy. This is the Matrix keypad. And the Atari 5200 schematics tell you exactly how to wire that up. It's just a bunch of switches with uh, rows and columns that end up hooked up to the connectors. So over here, you will see the 5200 connectors and there's a primary and the secondary. So the keypad is wired up to the primary connector. Again, this part here, right out of the Atari 5200 schematics. So the, the 5200, it is uh, it uses analog controllers. There's your standard controller, um, thumbstick, and a couple potentiometers in here, the 500K pots, um, and that's how the original controller worked. So what we need to do is we need to generate something that looks like a 500K pot and that we're going to use digital potentiometer circuits. So we've got two of these, we've got D pot zero, D pot one. Um, so the way a digital potentiometer works, it takes an 8-bit value and gives you resistance. Um, in this case, the resistance it can generate is 100K. Our 5200 controllers had a 500K pot. So what we can do, just knowing that how the 5200 works, is by measuring the uh, delay to charge and discharge a capacitor through that circuit. Um, we add a couple 0.22 microfarad capacitors to the outputs of the digital potentiometer. That'll make this uh, 100K digital pot kind of sort of look like a 500k um, analog pot, enough to make our 5200 happy. Um, so the first digital potentiometer hooks to the primary joystick connector, so this is your first joystick. Then we've got a second digital potentiometer hooks to your second joystick connector. Um, what else do we have to see? Um, up here we have a microcontroller. Um, in the handheld controller project, I used a ATtiny85. I needed a lot more I.O. pins than the ATtiny85 allowed, um, so I used an ATtiny861. I didn't know this at the time, but it seems to be a little bit of an oddball uh, microcontroller. Had a little bit of trouble um, finding a programmer to program it. 
uh, but I will put uh, details up on the web page to help people out with that. I did eventually figure out how to program them. So each digital potentiometer hooks up to the microcontroller through the SPI bus, so there is a master out slave in pin. Uh, those are shared. There is a serial clock. Uh, those are shared. Hook up to the uh, MOSI and the SCK up there in the microcontroller. And there's a chip select. So there's a POT0 chip select, a POT1 chip select. So those three pins um, hook up here to the microcontroller. We'll let it control both those uh, digital POTs. So we've used uh, a total of four of our I.O. pins, the MOSI, the SCK, the POT0CS, the POT1CS out of the microcontroller to control both axes um, of joysticks to the 5200. So the other thing we've got to control is uh, fire buttons. So there's two trigger buttons on each one of the 5200 connectors, trigger 0 and 1, and I call them trigger uh, 0, 1, and trigger 1, 1. Um, so what we did is I just uh, wired those directly up to the microcontroller via these four pins over here, triggered on low. So if you send out a ground, it'll register as a fire button push. So the microcontroller can push either fire button on the first controller or either fire button on the second controller. Um, that part's easy. Now let's interface to the PS2 joystick. Uh, so the PS2 joystick, it's a 9-pin connector, kind of looks like that. Cut this off of a PS2 extension cable. So the pins on this, again it's using the um, SPI bus. So we have a master in slave out, a master out slave in. Um, somewhere in here, yeah, there's a ground, a 3.3 volt power supply, its own chip select, and a serial clock. So the uh, MOSI and the SCK, uh, we can share those with the digital pots. So those, those are all shared pins. Um, the MISO, the master in slave out, the only one who's using that is the PS2 connector. So MISO is hooked up up there to the microcontroller. And then just like all of these, we needed a chip select. So there's a PS2 chip select, which is hooked up to the microcontroller. So that's digital protocol. There's pages on the web that were enormously helpful, uh, taught me how to communicate in this protocol. So every so often you pull the microcontroller and it tells you the position on the right and left thumbsticks, it tells you all the buttons, which ones are down, etc. Uh, you'll see a few other things on here that have just run out to, to pins. Um, those are just optional, we didn't need them to hook up to anything, so there's like a um, acknowledge bit that we didn't need. Uh, there's power for the uh, vibration motor that we didn't use, etc. Everything else on here was 5 volt, but the um, PS2 controller is supposed to take 3.3 volts. So we have a regulator that takes the 5 volts, converts it down to 3.3 volts. Um, reading around on the web, some controllers will work on 5 volts. Uh, but all of them are known to work on 3.3 volts, so best to use the regulator. There's also an ICSP header. ICSP stands for In Circuit Serial Programming, and what this is is a header that you can just plug your programmer into and you can program, you can reprogram the adapter uh, without having to pop the chip out and put it in a separate programmer. Down here I have a reset button. Reset button, you don't need it for anything. There's some pull-ups uh, here attached to the MISO line and the PS2 uh, chip select. Uh, there's a jumper here that controls how the keypad works. My original idea here was I was going to be able to use the start button on the PS2 controller. Um, as the start button for the uh, 5200. So I have wired some of the um, matrix keypad lines up to the microcontroller. I have a pull down resistor. I have a jumper down here that lets me um, choose uh, how the start, pause, and reset buttons, whether they'd be controlled from the microcontroller or controlled from the physical buttons on the adapter. Um, I haven't got this working yet. It's, it seems a little bit tricky uh, to get this matrix keypad stuff simulated through the microcontroller. 
Uh, so right now you do have to use uh, physical buttons for your start, stop, and pause, which are those three buttons there. And then you set the um, jumper down here to use those three buttons rather than use the microcontroller to control your start, stop, and uh, pause. Um, might still get this working at some point. Don't know yet. So here's the board itself. Um, we've got two 15-pin connectors. Uh, the primary one's over here. The secondary one is here. You don't even need to plug in the secondary one if you're just playing single joystick games. The secondary one is for things like Robotron, where you, you a single person plays with two sticks. Um, we've got our keypad. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, uh, hash, and star. And we've got our start, reset, and pause. Over here is the ICSP header. So to program this thing, um, there's this little, uh, it's called a USB ASP programmer. Um, you can buy this on eBay for like four bucks. Um, put it in here, I'm sure the red stripe is toward the controllers, and plug this end in into your uh, USB port. Uh, then you run a program called AVR Dude, and AVR Dude will program through this into the microcontroller. So that's the uh, ICSP port. Here we have the two digital potentiometer chips. Here we have the AT Tiny 861. Um, the reset button, um, which we don't actually need, but I had room to put it. Um, the 3.3 volt regulator, a couple capacitors for it. So over here there's an unpopulated pad where I was working on that pull down resistor stuff for the, the uh, getting the keypad to work through the microcontroller. Haven't debugged that part. So here is, of course, the PS2 um, connector. Hopefully you can see that well enough. Uh, what this was, this was just a PS2 extension cable. I took it, I snipped the end of it off. I stripped it, pulled out eight wires. There's actually one wire's not present, so there's only eight wires. And uh, you know, followed the instructions on the internet to know which wire went where, and hooked them up to this um, DuPont style header. So these little crimp pins, you crimp them onto the wires, stuff them into the header. Um, standard um, 2.54 millimeter DuPont header stuff. So just to show a little bit of perspective, you know, here's a Sony PlayStation 2 controller. Um, here's the homemade um, handheld controller that I demoed in my previous video. You know, with its built-in thumbstick and stuff. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.